survive in advance. March Madness has begun at the Merrill Center and Katie, we're glad you're with us. Championship game is on Saturday night. We're excited to be here for the first round of the Southland Tournament, UAW and HBU. McNeese and Northwestern State, our second matchup later. Under 10 to shoot. This is Josh Morgan, picked up by Bryson Long. Off the glass and good as Morgan puts UIW on the board first. Good start for UIW. Got the ball in the right person's hands. Been playing great basketball as of late. This HBU team coming off an historic game Saturday, a four overtime win at home over McNeese. 149-144, fourth highest scoring game in Division I history. Zion Tordoff off the mark, and Sam Hoffman for HBU gets foul going after the rebound. Yeah, David, I'd have been, had a talk with my defensive coaches after that one. A little <laughs> Monday morning meeting, just like when Eddie House scored 61 points on my Cal team, my, my defensive coordinator and I had a little meeting. Made sure it was Monday, though. I, yeah. I, I hope Sunday HBU just took the day off after that one. <laughs> Foul was called on Brendan Swaby for the Cardinals. Nice feet inside, long, and Tordoff able to finish. Now, great look inside, and you can see now it's you can see the difference now in Ron Cottrell's team. He's picking up full court. It's been a change in their uh, in their repertoire a little bit, trying to extend, get the defense out on the floor. This is a good offensive UIW squad, and an example, Brandon Swaby for three, his 22nd of the season. When UIW has won, they've been able to put up good offensive numbers. Absolutely, and that's the danger of, you know, when you extend your defense, you can get 10, 10 parts of the floor. Tordoff feeds Hoffman and the two big men with buckets for HBU in the early going. I really like Lee on the top of this press because if they can get the ball, they can throw up the ball to a, a guy who can really score. And transition. Dylan Heyman in trouble. Finds Swaby. For three, Drew Lutz. Got it. Very good ball movement by UIW, David. They did a nice job against pressure, and the ball rotated for open three. So two threes already for the Cardinals. Here's Sam Hoffman for three, unable to answer. 255 pound junior from Belgium. Steal, however, the finish by Lee after the steal by the junior Christian Corsalt. I love the assist on that play, knowing your teammates and how to feed them. From the corner, here's Morgan. And UIW handle the bulk of HBU inside then? Well, that's tough. And they, you know, that's the challenge that Dr. Carson Cunningham talked about. They, they're going to be small. It's no secret. They just, just playing the zone is one way. You zone up, you keep your bigger players at home. They're not, not that they're huge, but they're a little bit bigger on the wings. And you try to help get help in there. You want to cover down. Quick it, double on Tordoff. Got it knocked away from behind by Heyman. And the zone works for the Cardinals. Now they were small, but they certainly kept the ball on the perimeter until the very end. Josh Morgan drives. Foul called. David, while the zone is important for a couple of reasons, one, it hides your size, and two, is it keeps you, really, if you're, if you're HBU, from trying to go into the lead. Here's the play. You can see the, the contact, but you know, the zone can be effective of taking away another team's score because you can't just manufacture plays for your best score against the zone. It's just hard to do. Benjamin Christie checks in. 6'11 freshman, but very good from beyond the arc as well. 51 3 second on the squad. As Heyman goes to the bench. I like him coming off the bench. You say, why doesn't he start if he's so big? But you know, they need him. Steal. Here comes Lee, HBU with numbers. Lee to the line. Well, that's where HBU's also been better, David, that when their defense has, you know, created turnovers, they've been able to get out and score in transition. And Ron Cottrell's teams have always done that. So if they can really get stops, get some deflections, they can get out and run. You mentioned the four overtime win for HBU over McNeese, and this man, Darius Lee, senior from Harlem, New York, scored the most points by a Division I player in a game this season. 52, it tied the conference's scoring record 
set by two other players lately, or, or most recently, Mike James for Lamar, but that was over a decade ago. Well, he needed a couple overtimes, but I don't care how many overtimes, that's getting it done. That's that's really prolific. You get tired at the end of overtimes. For him to continue to play and pull out a victory, that's huge. One point UIW lead coming up on four minutes in. RJ Glasper, the runner. Now he's the one guy you gotta keep out of the lane. You gotta make sure that if you're gonna make somebody else beat you, try to get it out of his hands. He's very capable and he's really tough player. He just has been tough all year long. Just under 16 points a game to lead the Cardinals. Tordoff finds Long for the tie. Oh, he's quite a guy. He's written books, as, mm -hmm. as you know, and I don't, I don't know if our listeners or, or, or viewers know that, but quite an author. I mean, just an interesting, really interesting uh, coach and person, educator. Played a year at Oregon State, two years at Purdue under Gene Cady, and he has his PhD in history back in 2006. Then he got his MBA later from DePaul. Uh, he's been there, and I coached against him. He was at Oregon State and coached against him as a player. He was a great player. Under Dr. Carson Cunningham, UIW's had the first 1,000 APR in program history. They've had the highest four GPAs in school history, a reflection of their head coach and his stress on academics. Even today, tough shot by Glasper misfires. 10-7, the UIW lead just under five minutes in. First game of the 2022 Southland Conference Tournament. Last year here in Katy, Texas, will end a 15-year run. We'll be at Lake Charles, Louisiana next year. UIW comes out in their 2-3 again. Well, they're trying to match up. They're trying to match up out of it, David. Darius Lee misfires from three, tort off the rebound. And the putback. So I don't care what kind of defense you're in. In the end, you got a rebound, and that's going to be the challenge. And that's Dr. Cunningham's challenge. It's getting his team to put a body on somebody. In the three regular season games between these two teams, HBU and over nine rebounding edge per contest. Lutz the runner. Corsalt, HBU, its first lead. Well, UAW's gonna give them those shots. They're not gonna give up anything at the rim, but there's gonna be some openings. If HBU can find a way, they're gonna have some opportunities. Glasper connects this time his second field goal. Well, he's come off two ball screens, and he's been very effective. There hasn't been much help coming off those screens. He's very slippery. You've got to get a body on him. You've got to put two guys on him when he's got the ball coming off screens. Long open for three. Another offensive board, toward off again. Whistle blows, and the shot clock resets to 30, but a few years now, it only goes back to 20 off an offensive rebound. And then they'll tick the three seconds off since the board. So Ryan Cottrell's team, 17 to shoot. Well, you can see they're making a concerted effort, which I really applaud. When if shots aren't going down, you've got to know you've got an advantage for the size to the glass. They're making an effort to go get putbacks, reloads, any kind of second chance opportunities. And a defense by the UIW band. Long the reverse, pretty, and HBU back in front. Christie for three. Bursault with the basketball, a career high 30 in the four overtime win over McNeese Saturday. He'll try his hand for three. Swaby the rebound. Glasper doubled. Morgan the Euro step finds Gristy in the finish. Great individual move along the baseline. And the big fella running to the rim. That was a pretty play. Back and forth we go early. Winner gets AM Corpus Christi, 5 o'clock Central tomorrow in the second round. You can see them talking out front, David. They're trying to get matchups. They don't want to put two on the ball. Another three, long again. Is that what HBU wants, to keep firing from three? Well, they're going to have some opportunities. There's no question about that, but they've got to see if they can get better shots. 
Steele. Torda finds Lee. And by the way, that's a better shot. <laughs> you can get Darius Lee in transition before the defense gets set up. You don't man, there's no man, there's no zone. That's called getting back in transition, and that's how you beat defenses, especially zones. They can't set up fast enough. HBU forces the most steals in the Southland coming in. Morgan. We've already already had 11 three-point attempts combined. HBU's 0 of 6 from beyond the arc. This was the zero was going to happen. Inbounds to Long, who gives it right back to Hoffman, though too long on the layup. Well, I don't think he believed how he could believe how open he was. He, he was so open. For three, Lutz. UAW 2 of 4 from beyond the arc. Rather, I apologize, 2 of 5. HBU looks for their first one from deep and still 0 for now 0 of 7 as Hoffman misfires. A little bit quick on the trigger, David. I, I love transition threes, but I think they can get some better looking shots if they can be a little more patient. I'm sure Ron Contra and the staff will talk a little bit more about that. Under 10 to shoot. Swaby gets the step. Foul. Quick move by the junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You know, it's amazing, David. We talked to both coaches, and you know, you play a lot of games, but these coaches are, these teams are still evolving. You can see what they're doing here. Here's the drive, the quick penetration, and they just didn't close down quick enough. But you know, you're, you're still making a, a changes to your, your defense, your offense. Ron Cottrell's team's making changes. They've changed their offense in some ways, going from a 2 3 high to a 1 4 set. They've pressed more, added presses and that's really helped their team. Swaby just 55% from the line, and he, uh, along with two others on the floor, usually don't get a bunch of action. God's gift as a Dima, the sophomore from Nigeria, and Sese Hassan Mobutu, freshman from the Congo. They're all on the floor right now. Charlie Yoder, a key injury for UIW, freshman from LaGrange, Indiana, 12 points a game. He's not available due to a sprained ankle. And Bradley Akile with a shoulder injury, not available as no, well. No, as a coach, you have to make adjustments, David. You've got to, you know, deal with the hand that's been dealt. And, and Coach Cunningham's done that. You know, now they're back to the man. They've said, all right, enough zone. We're not, we're not uh, liking some of the results. They're going to go back to some aggressive man. I like it. I like the change. Lee lobs it inside to Tordoff as Adinma picks up the foul. And good play, conversely, by obviously the Huskies. They noticed the man-to-man -man right away. David, they didn't settle for outside shots with the zone was giving them. They went right away to a high post entry, high low feed, no help on the backside, and they drew the foul. Tordoff listed at 6'8", 225. It looks bigger than that. His senior from Bradford, England, played at Maris two seasons, but hurt all of last year. And as the season's gone along, has improved as he just simply gotten used to playing basketball again. Absolutely. I've had some players from England, some very good players. And, you know, with time, uh, you know, their first love was, was soccer. <laughs> it wasn't basketball. <laughs> so things change, but uh, there's some awfully good players coming out of England. I was fortunate to have a couple that were outstanding. Well, up two at the line. A lot of movement again, but they'll take their time as long as any team typically in the Southland, although Lutz able to find the paint and connects. Well, he's one-on-one -on -one in the paint with no help. He's pretty hard to contain. You can almost have to bring another defender there. Now they're back. It looks like in the zone. They didn't stay in the man. They said, look, we can't match up to that high-low set, so they're going back to the zone. Parcel makes this move. Tordoff. They leave Corsalt open, can't connect again, and this time Tordoff goes over the back of his edema. That's his second. Well, again, the zone proved to be, I think, beneficial because they were able to block out, get a foul over the back, keep the Huskies on the perimeter. They just didn't like the look of going man-to-man -man against the much taller and, 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 you know, superior team inside in the Huskies. So, it's a game where they're going to have to make some adjustments, uh, I think, as, as time goes on. So Tordoff goes out, and HBU gets even bigger, and Zach Iayemi checks in. 
A junior from Cypress, Texas, near here. 6'9", 250. Swaby almost traveled. Finds Morgan for three. Well, I like the size. I've always been a coach. I've played some awfully small players, but I like having a little size on the floor. Makes it a little tougher. And Ia Yemi's going to pick up a foul. I wonder if they'll go to the monitor on this. His hand was in the face of Ezadima. And Ia Yemi picks up his first. Ron Cottrell thinking that Ezadima held him. But instead, just a common foul. They will not go to the monitor. I wondered at first because you see how high Ia Yemi gets his arm. Well, it's a kind of a reaction, reaction. You can see there's some contact below. And you can see why Ron Cottrell would like the officials at least to take a look at that. Always picking on the little guys, aren't they? Backdoor feed, Morgan. The, the pretty pass from Swaby. I meant they're always picking on the big guys. But that was a great look. And again, they're back now. UAW is in the zone. They're going to have to find a way to penetrate and get to the glass. Long for three. They're now 0 of 8 from beyond the arc. Lutz on the other end. Yes! The eight seed up seven. And, and David, when the other team's 0 for 8, why not play a zone, right? You know, you look at statistics. You don't always look at stats, but you can't ignore that one. 0 for 8, you stay in that zone as long as you can. 8 nothing. UIW run, and here they force the turnover. Lutz finds Mobutu. Nine point edge. H Out and hitting some big time shots. And you know, the Huskies got to stay on the glass. They had three offensive rebounds, which led to three baskets. Their shots weren't falling, but they were dominating inside, and they've gotten away from that. Bryson Long looks to end the drought and does. And by the way, I was going to mention, and they beat me to the punch, Long's got to get going. <laughs> He's going to have to hit some shots as well. So, uh, stre you know, stretch the defense a little bit. Long's 59th three. He's easily their best three-point shooter, 40%, and ends a four-minute scoring drought for HBU. As Adima looks to answer. EAMU with position. As Adima, his second foul. Great feed by Darius Lee. I mean, that's what you do. Darius Lee had a wide open shot. And you know what he did, does? He defeats his teammate for the sure two and free throws. We'll see Ia Yemi at the line, but back to your comment on Darius Lee's pass. He's sixth in the conference in assists. By the way, third rebounds, third in scoring, sixth in the nation in steals, second team all conference. And Ron Cottrell said, oh, he'll be motivated because of that coming into Katie. He wanted that first team nod. Well, he's, he's got pride. That's all it means. You know, you he plays hard every game against double teams, triple teams, and he's still putting up numbers. Spins on Swaby and finishes. Well, I like the no call by the officials. A little bit of a flop, but Darius leaves a load. David, they're going to have to put two guys on him in there. I don't care, man zone, what you're playing, combination, matchup. You better put another defender on Darius Lee. He's too valuable. He has seven to lead the Huskies, who are back within four. Lutz pulls up. Yes. Well, he's such a sneaky player. What I mean by that, he's able to get by you and then pull up on a dime. He's an athletic player. He's quick, great release. He's a low. He's been a real thorn in the Husky side so far. Ten for Lutz to lead all scores. Long finds an open corso. Bodies flying and a foul on HBU. EAM, he's picked up a second. Sixteenth up. Well, again, I'd rather you pick up some offensive fouls and maybe some over the backs to be aggressive. I have no problem with that as a coach. Uh, I, you know, you don't want to you don't want to come out of the game. Now he's got to come out of the game. But you, you know, you want to be aggressive if you can. That's how HPU was getting got their lead early, and that's how they were playing well. They were playing aggressive on the glass. Let's drives. This time backs it out. Glasper from the corner. Long just saves the Jade C pass. He'll spit and fire, yes. Well, much like Drew Lutz, Rice Long is showing you his capability of being versatile. Morgan challenges Hoffman, and Hoffman wins the battle. Under six to play, first half. Lee 
backs it on Swaby. Nice spin and finish. David, that was an unbelievable spin. The, the quickness he, that he twirled on the baseline. He knew what he was going to do. He took the ball at baseline, took the ball in middle, and came back to the baseline. No help and finished. Great individual move by Darius Lee. 9 2 HBU run out of the timeout. That's why coaches call timeout or <laughs> TV timeouts. Either way, you got to use them. Glasper, a quiet first half. Seven to shoot. He has the basketball. Gets by two Huskies. Nice feet to the corner. Morgan! Well, David, Glasper's been quiet, but look what he does for his team. He gets his teammate wide open. Look, he's still alone. You have to put another body on him. He gets inside your defense, quick with the ball, strong, and he finds his teammates. Second on the team in assist, Glasper, and Morgan has his first three of the night. C challenging Gristy. Corso, pretty drive and finish as he gets the roll. Now nice penetration by Jade C and then a great individual move to the basket. We've seen some really nice takes to the basket, David. Really effective. Both teams have an aggressive going to the rim. Swaby finds. Morgan and how in traffic he got in between two Huskies and gets his fourth field goal. Well, I'd be interested to see how many, in the end of this half, how many points in the paint. Both teams really getting to the rim. 57% shooting for UIW. C for three. Lead the offensive rebound. And the putback. Well, how did he make that shot? He had two guys kind of hanging on him. Offensive rebound avoids a little bit of contact and knocks it off the glass. Score, score. That's all I can tell you. They, he just, what a, what a great knack. He's up to 11 after his 52.18 rebound performance Saturday and the four overtime win over McNeese. Lutz, that was Lee with the tip. Here comes C. Hoffman. HBU within one. Again, a nice feed by Jade C. That's two in a row where he's found his teammates. You know, he's been struggling a little bit, but he's not struggling tonight. He's really giving his team a lift. Under three minutes to go first half. Texas A&M Corpus Christi awaits the winner tomorrow in our first second round matchup. Lutz got away with a push off and finishes. Uh, you're not going to tell him that. That was just a <laughs> stop on a dime, a little how do you do. But he's tough. I told you, his ability to change direction, even if he gets a little help, is pretty tough. Carson Cunningham calls in their table setter. But he's been their scorer today. 12 points. Corso for three. Around the rim and in. Finally, they get their second three. And we're tied up. And guess what? Another assist by Jade C. That's three in a row from Jade C to help his teammates. Give his teammates a lift. This is a hectic pace. To answer Swaby, HBU can take the lead. Here's Lee. Yeah, they were down. They were they were down big, nine almost double digits. Here comes the double. Hoffman for the lead. Yes. Their first lead since 15-14, but it didn't take long for them to erase the nine-point deficit. No, and David got four consecutive assists to end this, you know, to end their, the, the run before the TV timeout. So, been huge. And now you see uh, UIW coming out of the timeout here, seeing if they can get the ball maybe back in Glasper's hands, make something happen. There's Glasper with the ball. He's going to try to create. Just four and a half for Glasper, and here he comes. Short on the shot. Well, that was a good play call. Jade C's come off the bench the last three weeks after being the full-time starter. It's maybe his best game since that switch in rolls. Spin move in the paint. Wild shot falls. David, he can, he's like Midas. He's got the Midas touch. He throws it to his teammates. They score. He gets to the basket, throws it up. He's been on a tear. He's been really a, a factor in this stretch, in this run by the Huskies. 12-2 HBU run. We're under a minute to go in the first. Eight to shoot. UIW turns it over. Well, you see what UIW is trying to do. They're trying to get 
and spread the floor a little bit. That's what Dr. Cunningham talked about with us. He wants to get that you know, spacing on the floor, try to take advantage of their quickness. But I think it's HBU doing a really good job defensively, creating some turnovers. They're going to run it down here. They're not going to get the last shot, but they don't want to leave a lot for UIW coming back the other direction. Yeah, and not playing two for one. Eight to shoot. Hoffman for three. Last chance here, perhaps, for UIW. Mobutu. Plenty of time. Glassberg gets to the rim. Is that a tie up? Yes, says Darren George. It was Corsalt with his hands on the ball. Well, has a little bit of a mental error. Uh, by Glasper because you know you you want to take a basket if you can get there in transition but that was no clear-cut path to the basket and what you're doing now is giving HPU a chance to get the last shot that shouldn't have happened a little bit of frustration yeah, I thought perhaps HPU would play two for one initially but they get away with it now they can take the final shot here yeah I'm not a big two for one guy unless you get a good one I know okay. the pros do it all the time but you know it's just a little bit longer clock here five seconds C for three. And that'll do it in a fun, fast pace. Just over eight minutes no, they, David, they don't get back in this game. They were down almost double digits, and he, he, led, he led the comeback. So great to have a bench player, a guy that understands his role, unselfish to bring his team back. I, it's a great sign for the Huskies. And here's Drew Lutz with the basketball. You mentioned there's 12 points to pace UAW, but can they get Glasper going? Ten to shoot. Let's find Glasper for three. That'll help. Well, David, I'm going to make a statement here, and I always used to say this when I coach. Sometimes it's better to get that player a, a touch late in the clock. Early, the defense is set. Late, it's not. And you see what happens. He got the ball. He got the touch late, and he scored. So I think they're trying to get some movement and then get the ball into Glasper's hands to create at the end of the shot clock. Corsault's pass tipped, and here comes Swaby for UIW. Outlet Glasper. HBU good getting back, but here's Glasper for three, and right off the bat, six to begin the half, and UAW in front. David, were they listening to us? I don't know, maybe uh, <laughs> Coach Cunningham, you know, I, listen, he didn't need me to tell him. Uh, I, I'm not a rocket scientist, but you, you knew that Glasper was going to have to do something to get back in this game. They've obviously put the ball in his hands, and they've benefited. HBU in their games this season, so up and down. It's been Ron Cottrell's maybe biggest frustration with this young group. They've been a little more up lately, especially the four overtime win over McNeese Saturday. <laughs> Lee can't answer for three. Toward off the offensive board and he's foul. No, you're right, David. They've been better when they've been behind and they've had to come back. They've not enjoyed leads very well. They've given some up. And then when they've gotten down, they've shown the ability to come back. But let's watch Glasper, David. Look at the ability to step. He knows where he's at the three-point line and he just you know, that's a that's a tough shot, and uh, he's, on a, he's on a roll right now. HBU trail by eight at home to UIW February 24th, one by 14. They led UNO one week ago by 17 with 15 minutes to go, but lost. They trailed Corpus by 20 back on February 26th, got it to within one. They've been back and forth all season. Right they, now they're down. David, they're better when they're down. I don't know if you want to, you know, play from behind all the time, but they've just been... They have a knack. When they get down, they just seem to focus and come back. They've struggled with the leads. Ten to shoot. Tordoff covers Lutz. Swaby drives, finds Heyman, has to hurry for three. Lead the rebound. Good possession defensively by HBU, that they need more stops like that. Darius Lee, 11 points, six boards, two steals first half. Runs over Heyman, that doesn't count, although it's a blocking foul on the freshman Heyman. Coach Cunningham not happy with that call. Looked like he was outside of the arc, but the officials, I think, felt that he was still moving. Darren George had the angle. There trying to communicate to Dr. Cunningham. HBU still has not scored this half. Corsault steps back. Gets the roll. A tough shot puts HBU back in front. Well, that's a great shot. They needed that basket just to slow down quiet UIW. You know, UIW played better when they came back out 
and they had a little more energy. They, they play with a short bench, so they need some energy. They're going to need timeouts and to rest a little bit. Here's Glasper again. Would have been his third three of the half. Korsalt again steps back. Connects again. Well, it was Jade C at the end of the half, David. Now it's Korsalt that's really making some big baskets for, the, for their team. That's, those are huge baskets, really rhythm shots, creating some space with a step back and knocking them down. Junior from Los Angeles with 11, averaged 12 a game in conference play in the regular season. Glasper finishes the runner. Now that's the RJ Glasper that we've seen all year. And, and you know, once he gets on a roll, it's kind of hard to slow him down. They had him under control. They had him under check in the first half, but he's, he's really started out with a bang in this half. We'll repeat, 83 points total in UAW's three conference wins. Tore it off with position, doubled. 778%, and Glasper shoots 91 and hasn't been there once, so they'd love to see Glasper get to the line. Yep, they lead the conference in free throw percentage, third in three-point shooting. But a pretty feed as Long is able to find Darius Lee for his first points of the half. Well, that was a mishap inside, David. They left the, the middle open. That's the one area defensively on an out-of-bounds under you don't want to leave under leave open and they found uh, Lee found the scene. Texas A&M Corpus Christi awaits the winner of this one tomorrow five o'clock our first second round matchup. Ben Braun I'm David Salzman. Nine to shoot. Glasper with the basketball. Long three for the tie. You would have you shorthanded three key players throughout the season not available as Corsal will go to the line. That includes Charlie Yoder averaging 12 a game. And so a three-point shooting, UAW may have to rely on even more. Ron Cottrell has had the luxury of a couple of transfers really stepping up more as the season's gone along, including this one, the Nevada transfer in Corsal mentioned his 12 points a game in conference play. Well, he's done a great job. And you know, he's still got some young players. And, and that's, you forget that too, even with some guys. Uh, they do play, they play with some young players in their team, so we still got some guys, you know, getting experience, but I, I like his transfers, like the guys that have stepped up, and when, you know, I used to, I've said this oftentimes, coaching against Ron Cottrell, I never liked playing his team's team, <laughs> they, they, and you know that, you used to cover them, they're, they're an exciting team, they, they, you know, are explosive offensively, uh, they get after you, make you handle the basketball, so tough guy, to, tough coach to play against. Swaby the pull up, in and out. It's an 8-2 HBU run. This is about the game we expected. A lot of up and down pace. Some inconsistency you'll see from two of the lower teams in the league, but also some exciting basketball, especially when both teams have been on their runs. Well, I love how HBU looks for Hoffman to come set some screens. You know, when you're 260, that's a guy I'd be motioning over to come get me too, because uh, it's tough to, if you're a defender to get through and around a big, strong player like that. So. Look for some more ball screens. Heyman just picked up his third, but he stays on the floor for UIW. Jade C off the bench. Now here's the zone again. Now you see UIW going back to the 2 3. C. Hoffman saved the basketball for a moment and a three second violation. Don't see that often. No, and it's an old school call from Darren George. No, it was, <laughs> but the other thing is J.C. had a shot, and it's great that he was getting assists, but he's got to take that shot in the middle of the lane. That's just a wide open shot, a little too unselfish, trying to, you know, step up and continue his assist ways, but he's got to look to score that as well. Here's Josh Morgan scoreless this half. Spin, fires, and Lee gets his ninth board. He's one away from a double-double. Crossover and pulled up, but Swaby got his hand on the ball. Here comes Morgan. Great defense on a one on one against a tough guy to defend, Darius Lee. But he defended him, came away with the ball. This game of runs, when's UAW going to have theirs? Good ball movement, Swaby. Out to an open Morgan for three. Cuts the deficit to two. And Morgan has done that all year for them. He's hit some big shots, spots up. And again, HBU has given up that, that lead. They've had leads twice, and it's UIW that's come back 
battling back with some outside shooting. Bersolt finds C. Six to shoot. C. One to Tordoff, couldn't control it, but Lee is there and it connects with one on the shot clock. That's the last guy you want to have his hands on the ball, David, with one second to go, because he will make something happen, and he did. He, he just powered it back up with little time left on the clock. A little unfortunate for UAW. It looked like they were going to come away with a turnover and maybe a transition run. 15 for Lee to lead all scores. 10 to shoot for Lutz. Morgan, three to shoot. In traffic, two and a foul. They, Rescuing his team. I don't know how he got through that double, triple team. He stepped through. My goodness, there was very little of an opening here. You could see it here. He backs in, shot fake, steps through, goes over the top of not two, but four outstretched hands. Well, here it is again. He's just a step through and right over the top. That's a tough finish. Tordoff just picked up his third. And Josh Morgan, sophomore from Brampton, Ontario, Canada. A chance to get UIW within one. Uh, I think both teams, David, know that neither team's going anywhere. <laughs> you know, you can put a run together, but you better, you better sustain it or you better be ready for a, another run. Both teams showing the ability to come back on each other. When it's the fourth time you've played each other, there's not so much you don't know about your opponent. No, it, there's, a, there's, there's a familiarity, and it's kind of scary. Uh, you're just going to have to perform. It's more about you than it is your opponent. And I've often said that. It's how you're playing and what you do. There's no tricks. C. Lutz got in front of Hoffman, who drives. UAW basketball. Well, I like the aggressiveness of HPU. They didn't come away with anything, but I like their ability to try to go to the basket. You know, they've given Darius Lee a break, which he deserves to the next time out. But, you know, I, I like the idea of going inside and trying to make something happen to the rim. Is this a game where the last run wins? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, it sure looks like it. Heyman. Couldn't get the roll. Tore it off on the floor with three fouls with the rebound. HBU continues to dominate the board. It's plus 11. C drives. UNW won. Then HBU won both games that counted towards the conference standings. Yeah, and I think it is rare. But David, as I said, you know, when you start playing teams and you're familiar with them, you're in your conference, you're playing them again, whether it's the tournament or, uh, you know, later, you, you just really throw out. It's not, there's no secrets anymore. There's no tricks. It's about how you play. I think what's significant this game is what, keep an eye on the team fouls. HBU's only committed one, uh, and UIW's committed six. So uh, you're going to have to really play now without fouling. You don't want to put HBU to the line. Uh, they'll be in the double bonus, uh, you know, if they continue to, if UIW continues to foul. Drew Lutz paced his team in the first half. He's gotten help this second half. There's seven to shoot. Glasper on the bench. Swaby needs to hurry. Doubled. Three up by Mobutu. Wouldn't have counted. Shot clock violation. David, that's great team defense by HBU. They were all over the ball. They were there at the baseline on the drive. Every time they were trying to get into the paint create, I thought Ron Cottrell's team really stayed disciplined defensively. Ron Cottrell is 31st season as head coach of HBU, 507 wins. His lead assistant, Stephen Key, has been with him since he was a student assistant, 28 of those 31 years. Back door, C, long finishes. And long hit the floor hard, slow to get up. In fact, just now getting up and will try to limp to the other end of the floor. Especially the HBU bench silent when they saw this one initially because Long has been a key player for them today. This is a better look. And just about a twist of that left ankle. And also hit the floor hard. <laughs> he's uh, looking at C and says he's all right. He's going to stay on the floor. Well, he's a tough kid. We've seen him get nailed before. Uh, you know, you, you just, there's no tomorrow. <laughs> so you have to play with a little pain, but he took a pretty good hit. 
Prosper will come in at the next whistle. For three, Swaby. Torn off skies over Ezedema for the rebound. Lee, tripled. Tornoff couldn't handle the pass. Got it back, however, and finishes. Well, he didn't handle it, then he did, and that's a sign of a, a really good player, just staying with it, but it's Darius Lee that just got the triple team, David. He knows what to do. He's been doubled and tripled his whole career. He finds people. Lutz fouled. This is a 6 nothing HBU run that has given them their biggest lead exactly halfway through the second half. And Drew Lutz to the line to try to end the HBU run. Jason Thompson, the junior, just came on the floor and picked up his first foul. Lutz, a tough cover to the basket. He's so slippery, he's so quick. And just when you think you can defend him going to the rim, and he's a good free throw shooter, then he pulls up and he, and he creates space and, not, and knocks down mid-range shots. So, you know, he's a load. He really creates a lot of uh, an offense for his team. But it's, you know, it's interesting, it's HBU as well as they're playing and they've been playing, they just can't shake UIW. You know, Carnot Ward is doing a great job of just staying in this game and, and battling. They, and you know, that's what you have to do. You talk about a fourth time, you know, the team that battles is gonna get rewarded. Just battle, battle, and be there at the end. Lutz, Glasper, and Morgan have all but eight of UIW's points. They're within five. Long after getting banged up a moment ago. Thompson, how about that? Off the bench a minute ago, rattles in his first jumper. Great patience by HBU against the zone, David. That was a good looking zone possession uh, for the Cardinal, but I thought that Cardinal, I thought that HBU did a really good job just staying patient against the zone, zone two free zone. Christie for three. UIW without one offensive rebound today. Well, that's a credit also to HBU. I know there's a size uh, factor. Nice pass, Thompson, but Swaby got his hand on the ball and Lee saves it into the hands of Glasper. Swaby got fouled. Well, that's what it incarnate word has to do, David. They've got to get to the free throw line. And, you know, it's great that they can knock down threes, but when you get, you're a three-point shooting team and, and you get closed out on, you've got to really be able to put it down and punish another team and try to get to the line. I think that's a really good strategy to, to hang in this game. How important also is it for either Swaby, Benjamin Christie, or both to lift their offensive game up? There's only so much Glasper, Lutz, and Morgan can do for Carson Cunningham. No, and play. HBU's done a great job on Glasper, but that's because he's no secret. He's punished. Not only uh, HBU in the past, he's punished the league. I mean, Glasper's somebody you've got to, you know, you go into a game making a conscious effort to say, we're going to take you out and then see where we stand with somebody else. So they've done a good job on Glasper. Christie just came out for Heyman. Swaby makes both, and he's up to six, just ahead of his average. Five-point HBU lead, under nine to go. And here's the zone again. They can ill afford to get more in foul trouble and great bonus situation, which will happen next time they create, they, they foul. They, the two threes should help protect them a little bit. Lee muscles his way inside, finds Thompson who finishes. Uh, he's just uncanny, David. I mean, just uh, for a scorer that have that ability to, to find his teammates, really an unselfish player. Swaby double backs out. Glasper, two early threes this half. Now under 10 to shoot. Heyman forces it. Probably not the shot UIW wanted. No, but that again has something to do with the Huskies defense, David. They created that shot. They, they, they were all over the ball. Good help side defense. Chance for HBU to take their biggest lead. Under eight to go. Lee, nice fast. Tord off hoops. Gets ahead and dunks it down. David, all I can say is Darius Lee, he's making it happen for his team. I know the dunk will be what excites the crowd, the team, but it was the pass by Lee that just created that shot. 
Swaby drives. HBU is now building up almost a 10-point lead. UAW, though, has been shown they've been able to get back in the game. But uh, what the story has been is HBU struggling from the perimeter. Three for 16, but 38 points in the paint. Their size, their depth. I don't think we talk enough about the depth of HBU. That can hurt a lot of teams, and it's partic particularly, I think, causing a little bit of fatigue with UIW. HBU is 9 of 11 shooting this half. And the Cardinals still without an offensive rebound. That's tough to do against the Huskies. They've got a size advantage at every position. Long. Trying to find Lee. Swaby there. However, it's Long who gets in front of the pass. And it's a reset to 20 on the shot clock. For three, Hoffman. Yes, what a sequence. UIW a chance to get it to within maybe four. Instead, Hoffman's three gives us our first double-digit lead of the night. David, they were so close. They had it, did everything but come up with that ball. They jarred it loose. They had two hands on it, and it was the pesky Huskies that in the end came up with the basketball. Great action. Christie back on the floor with the basketball. Glasper's on the bench. Six to shoot. Lutz fires and connects. And he's going to have to do more of that, David. He's going to have to get his own if he has to because he's been the guy. He's been the catalyst for their team since the opening, the onset of this game. He's been, he's been a guy that's carried his team. He's going to have to be more aggressive. He has 16 to lead UIW. Marcelt drives, gets the roll. That's a pretty good look because I thought he got bumped on the way up. He still managed to get it off the glass. You're going to have to slow down HBU somehow. Quietly, 15 for Corsal to match Lee. Christie has the shorter, long covering, however, a double. Nice pass, but a block! Swaby got it back, however. It'd be tough on the glass, he said, but we have to protect the rim. That's our biggest challenge, and you know what? He was 100% right. They have really struggled just keeping HBU out of the paint. Huskies, 60% shooting, 38 paint points. Up eight as we approach five and a half to go with Ben Braun, I'm David Salzman. Ten to shoot. Long. Long. Passed it off and into the hands of Lutz. Lutz got it taken away by Long. HBU with numbers. Thompson back to Lee. David, I love that fast break because what Darius Lee did is he gave it up, got it back, and because of their spacing on the floor, that's a great that's a great lesson for young players. Stay wider than the lane line. Don't go down the middle of the floor where one guy can guard two. Great spacing on the two-on-one. 17 for Lee after 52 Saturday and the four-overtime win over McNeese. Heyman unable to answer. Where will the points come from UIW? And can they get the stops defensively? As you just mentioned, that's been a troublesome spot for the Cardinals today. Well, HBU also, though, David, they've got to take care of the basketball. They exhausted the shot clock last possession. That's OK to be patient, but they can't turn it over. they got to, they got to try to get to the rim. Corsal drives, and it's HBU's biggest lead. Well, yeah, and they do. <laughs> there, there you go. They, they have just punished Incarnate Word at the basket, and, and obviously with the size and now a timeout. This, uh, you know, HBU has just been uh, just incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, incredible. 13 for 15 from the floor. So, you know, it, HBU has been on fire 80-some uh, percent from the floor. That's that's getting it done. That's this half, 87% specifically. Can R.J. Glasper and his team for the Cardinals get back? We're under four to go, six to shoot. Morgan for three, well off. Heyman skies for the rebound. This is a methodical UIW team. They'll be one of the slowest offensively. Do they need to pick things up soon? Nine to shoot for Glasper. Glasper pulls up. Two shots, no points for UIW. We're down to 330. Well, it has been tough on Glasper, David, because there's always been a man and a half on him. Everywhere he's gone to try to get an opening, HBU has put another half a man to a man. It's been really difficult for R.J. Glasper. Hoffman fell. And, and you know, we talk about the offensive efficiency, 13 for 15, it doesn't get more, more 
much more efficient than that. But I don't think we're going to we really given HBU enough credit for what they've done defensively. There's always a there's always a correlation, and defensively, HBU has stepped up their game. They've been effective on Glasper. They've closed down. They have not given up offensive rebounds, and, and they've done a good job defending. So, uh, really, Ron. Cottrell's team has just taken a big step forward defensively, and they were struggling to start this game. You know, they had trouble getting on the board. They weren't scoring, but it was their defense, their tenacity, and their ability to share the ball to make a couple of runs to extend this lead that it propelled this, this team into their, their lead they have right now. That second free throw was much better as Hoffman in double figures himself. His team up 13. a and Corpus Christi. HBU, the likely matchup, 5 o'clock Central tomorrow to begin our second round. Josh Morgan and the Cardinals pull off a miracle comeback here with three to go. Swaby hangs. They almost got what would have been just their third offensive board, but Hoffman takes it away. Long left open. Morgan drives, got hammered. Well, you don't know if there's enough time, David, for them to come back in this game, and they're already a little bit fatigued. Uh, you can see, again, the, the advantage going to HPU with depth, size, strength. It's taken a lot out of UAW just to really battle these Huskies. The Huskies have battled tonight, David. This is, this is a strong performance by Ron Cottrell's team. We mentioned how they've been so up and down during games this season, signed up a young team, but they have not let, since early this half, really, they have not let UIW get on that run that maybe we expected they would. No, they didn't. But I said this earlier. I, you know, I told Ron Patrick before the game, I, he's a team that I don't want to play. You know, forget about that 150 plus points. I don't want to play any team that scores 150 points for starters. <laughs> but, but you know, that's how his team plays. His team can do that, and they've shown you that they can play both ends of the floor. Here's UIW with a, a nice press full court, and leads to the turnover. Darren George says Jason Thompson touched the ball last. Uh, and this drives Ron Cottrell nuts, David. You can see him on the sideline say, "Look, throw it somewhere else. Not get a turnover. Let's not let him get back in the game." You got to remember, there's just a three possession game. And there's plenty of time left. You can't have turnovers. You can have a lot of things right now, but don't throw it to the team in the in the red uniforms and don't lose it out of bounds. That's an unfortunate turnover. HBU has three timeouts left as well. well they can cut it to single digits here. Mobutu skies the pass out of bounds. Now that's unfortunate. Thought the spacing on the floor wasn't typical that Coach Cunningham likes to have. He's you know the team, he's, he's a coach that has great spacing with his personnel, but the spacing just didn't seem right on that play. Two guys kind of in the same spot, and then uh, the overthrow. Maybe a timing issue? 217, so they're not looking at whether that ball was tipped. We're over two minutes left, but maybe adding a couple of seconds to the clock. Well, time now for our Hercules Tire strong move of the game, and Zion Tornoff on the feed from Darius Lee dunks it down, helping his team lead by 11 with what is now 2.26 remaining in the game. Well, that's strong, and again, that's been the case for HBU. They've got size, they've got strength, and they've utilized it. So they added nine seconds to the clock. See how much time HBU tries to take off. They can't. Mobutu, the nice save. Lutz. What a cut it to nine. Instead of whistle. As Lutz was hit to the floor. That's a foul called on the junior from Granger, Indiana. Uh, David, that's so unfortunate. That's a great steal. Great press. Two guys on the ball. Deflection. The steal. We go the other way. Nice and selfish pass. And you just don't see that very often. Lutz on the on the missed free throw. I mean missed layup. ESPN Champ Week is brought to you by Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Sam Hoffman at the line. Well short. 
OAW hanging around with two minutes to go. Well, that's almost two air balls for the 70% free throw shooter. Glasper hangs. Those shots were falling earlier. UIW now six of 22 from the floor this half. Well, again, it's been HBU with really good defense. Part of the struggles have been HBU just stepping up defensively. Cause and effect, and I've always believed that. It's not the team doesn't just go cold by itself. You get help. Nine to shoot. Hoffman for three. Let's the rebound. UAW has to hurry now. Too much time. Lutz finds Christie. He's open for three. And the deficit down to eight, but there's 114 to go. There's time, David. HBO's going to have to make some free throws, and that's fortunate because if that foul's not called, that was a turnover. That ball actually went across the, the end line, and that would have been very interesting. Darren. I think you know, the officials can look at this, David. They, they, they can challenge this and to see, but I think because the foul call will take precedent. Correct. It's unfortunate, but that ball, I'm quite convinced, was out of bounds in favor of. But the foul first right, on right. Swaby, that's right. which is not reviewable. That's a Darren George judgment call. He was right on it. Quick call. Let's see how upset though Swaby was by the call. Yeah, he didn't think there was much contact. And HBU very fortunate there. Bryce, Bryson Long, 86% from the line. He's the fourth Husky in double figures. Lee and Corsalt with 17, Hoffman with 11, and Tordoff with eight. Uh, you got to admire that UIW is just fighting. They continue to battle, battle, and battle. Just really going up against a really strong and inspired and talented HBU squad tonight. Well, it looks like HBU a minute away from knocking UIW off here for the second straight year. Foul, however. And that will be free throws. 17 foul on HBU. Well, you, you know, you think the game's in the bag, David. It's a 10-point it's a lead with a minute to play. But now you put a good free throw shooter there. He knocks these down. It's an eight point lead, almost a two possession game with a minute to go. It's, you know, it's not what Ron Cottrell would like to do. It's, I think his team, I've said this, plays a little bit more, uh, you know, aggressive and a little bit better sometimes when they, when they don't have a lead. Lutz is 84% from the line. One as, more coming. As you stop the clock, that's the danger here. You, you know, you'd almost rather give up a basket than a foul because stopping the clock really lets your defense get set, and it's tougher. 72-64. Quick double on Thompson. Now Lee doubled. Long gets it across. Just. Now do you foul here? It's a three possession game. Yeah. There's the whistle. We've lost a couple. I, I'd like to win, but here it is. Here's going to be the play. Now they are going to get up there and, and, and really be aggressive. And they try to foul. There was no call there, surprisingly. I'm surprised at this, too. Carson Cunningham's letting the clock run down. There's five to shoot. Pass inside. That's good to finish. But the beautiful feed from Long as Corsal likely puts this game away. Well, I thought that the UAW right in front of us, David, was trying to foul. I just think you got to be a little more you know, aggressive, but that, then it's Bryce and Long finding Carsold. I mean, that, that's just a great look, but you get down right to the end of the shot clock. That's, again, why I go back to say, I'd rather just get the foul early. You got a lot of possessions left in the game. Looked like they were trying to foul. They just couldn't get a body. You know, uh, they struggled even to foul, uh, you know, intentionally today. Uh, it, it's, you know, when you're fatigued, sometimes your energy's not up, and I think that has something to do with this. I love a look to the HBU bench by Bryson Long. Really no smile, just looked at his head coach and said, I got this. What a feed. Glasper misfires, and HBU is going to move on for the second straight year. They'll end UIW season, and it'll be the Huskies against the 4 c Texas A&M Corpus Christi in our first game tomorrow. Both teams split the regular season series, winning of their opponent's home floor. Some initial I, thoughts. David, I'm really looking forward to that game. I can tell you for a number of reasons. It's in-state. It's in, it's, in state, it's a rivalry. Uh, 